Engaging the community is an important component of maintaining democracy. When your values align with the community, uh, you become a trusted partner in lobbying for information and getting that out to the community as well. For some, it's going to be action on the hill. For some, it's going to be writing letters. For some, it's going to be showing up to town hall meetings. Having partners like Alliance for a Better Utah providing venues for more education about our system of government and politics, for having more candidate forums, for having more debates. All of that, I think, is counter to the trend of decline in real news, for want of a better word. And that's one of the great things about ABU, because they help educate people about what are those local issues, and what are the state issues, and what are the federal issues that people need to know about. So ABU keeps the topic of health care on the front burner. The ACAA project was something we did earlier this year when Donald Trump came into office. About 1,500 of the 1,700 who responded who don't support repealing and replacing the ACA. There are ways we can improve what we've got. But to take away the protections that help constituents seems like the absolute wrong direction. Health care should be a right, not a privilege. That there are real people and real people's lives at the end of this discussion, and it's not just conceptual conversation about health care, but it's moms and dads and brothers and sisters who are living and dying based on these decisions. And that's why I'm grateful that ABU is taking this on, because I can't do this alone. Nobody can. It's impossible. I believe that voting is the most personal and most private way that you can articulate your concerns. It's important that there are credible, vetted nonprofits who are doing nonpartisan work. People need to cast an educated vote, and ABU helps us become better informed before we make our decisions. I think when it comes to the public lands discussion, you hear a lot of loud voices from people like Senator Orrin Hatch or Representative Mike Noel. Um, whose views and, and feelings on the issues don't necessarily represent all Utahns. You, know, you hear politicians saying that these areas have struggled economically because of the monument, and what, what would you say to that? I'd say that that is false. I'd go as far as to say that's a lie. It's very important to talk to these people and hear another story and hear their reality of what it's like to be down there. I was really proud of that entire project and I, I felt like it was an issue that we've cared about but I felt like that was where we were able to make a, hopefully a tangible difference. The debate over coal mining in Utah mostly centers on jobs and the economy. The reality is that the Utah legislature loves to talk about economic benefits so we want to put this in a frame that forces people to say okay the outdoor industry is an incredible economic engine here in the state of Utah. Check out these four quick stats and decide for yourself. Through our coal report tried to bring a little bit more of that think tank analysis to it and say let's look at the overall economic benefit of one versus the other. Uh, economic benefit from the extraction side there's economic benefit if you don't. I think ABU has done an excellent job of bringing those other voices into the conversation. I just hope that more of that can happen. People love these live debates because they like to see how the candidates are unscripted. Third district congressional debates in Sandy tonight. We've been very lucky to partner with Alliance for Better Utah on a number of occasions for uh, the presentation of debates in partnership with the John R. Park Debate Society at the University of Utah. Many times after hearing the different perspectives, your own perspective changes. It sets a, a stage where people can start to think about the relationship they have with their representatives being one of accountability. It demonstrates that these things can be driven by members of the community, right? It's not just the stakeholders that we would normally assume who shape the conversation. I think the two biggest threats to voting rights in Utah are apathy and gerrymandering. Imbalance. There is a holistic imbalance that has occurred. I hear from so many voters that their vote doesn't count because it's not a competitive race in their district. And I think it's important to draw those lines so that we do have competitive races wherever possible. Voter participation, we look at redistricting. One of the key roles that, that ABU plays is awareness. ABU has always been there, it's always been a voice, and people can rely on that voice to keep us standing up for them. That's what ABU is. There are people out there that understand how it all works and what we can do to, to be heard in a way that is effective. Not just be heard, we need to be effective too. I hope that everybody here will, will go out and tell two friends about what Better Utah does and, and help us expand our reach and make sure that people are, are watching the work that we do and participate with us along the way.